one as we gather this Tuesday morning and the nine o'clock bells are ringing we pause for a moment to remember those who are sick today particularly those who are sick and newly sick with COVID-19 we begin our prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen. May the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Sisters and brothers, as we prepare to come to the table of the Lord, we pause for a moment to first call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father and intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us all. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpassed the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads, and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. After the death of Naboth, the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Start down to meet Ahab, king of Israel, who rules in Samaria. He will be in the vineyard of Naboth, of which he has come to take possession. This is what you shall tell him. The Lord says, After murdering, do you also take possession? For this the Lord says, In the place where the dogs lift up the blood of Naboth, the dogs shall lick up your blood too. Ahab said to Elijah, Have you found me out, my enemy? Yes, he answered, because you have given yourself up to doing evil in the Lord's sight. I am bringing evil upon you. I will destroy you and will cut off every male in Ahab's line, whether slave or freeman in Israel. I will make your house like that of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and like that of Basha, the son of Ahijah, because of how you have provoked me by leading Israel into sin. Against Je Jezebel, too, the Lord declared, the dog shall devour Jezebel in the district of Jezreel. When one of Ahab's line dies in the city, dogs will devour him. When one of them dies in the field, the birds of the sky will devour him. Indeed, no one gave himself up to doing the evil in the sight of the Lord as did Ahab, urged on by his wife Jezebel. He became completely abominable by following idols, just as the Amorites had done the Lord drove out before the children of Israel. When Ahab heard these words, he tore his garments and put on sackcloth over his bare flesh. He fasted, slept in the sackcloth, and went about subdued. Then the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Have you seen that Ahab has humbled himself before me? Since he has humbled himself before me, I will not bring the evil at his time. I will bring, I will bring the evil upon his house during the reign of his son. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Be merciful, be merciful o, Lord, o Lord, for we have sinned. sinned. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin cleanse me. Be, be merciful, merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. For I acknowledge my offense, and my sin is before me always. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Turn away your face from my sins, and blot out all my guilt. Free me from blood guilt, O God, my saving God, that my tongue shall rival in your justice. Be merciful, Be merciful O Lord, for we have sinned. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. Alleluia, alleluia.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your heavenly Father. For he makes his sun rise on the bad and the good, and he causes rain to fall on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what recompense will you have? Do not tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers, what is unusual about that? Do not the pagans do the same? So be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I know I told, I've told the story before, so I apologize if I'm repeating to some of you. But one of the hardest, one of the hardest penances that I ever got in confession was after I had pretty thoroughly confessed from my perspective, by the way, and what we always do in confession, which was to make me look good and the other person look bad. After I had kind of thoroughly confessed that, the, the wise priest confessor said to me, uh, not that I would identify in the sense of, in the sense of kind of war, you know, when we talk about mortal enemies. I wouldn't say this person was a mortal enemy, but, but mortal enemy, but it was somebody with whom I was very seriously struggling. So enemy in that sense of the word. And so after I had laid out the whole story from my perspective, there was no discussion about sides, about who was right or who was wrong. The priest just said to me, I would invite you for your penance to begin to pray. Well, actually, first asked me a baited question for which I took the bait. Do you believe that we're all created in God's image and likeness? And I said, of course. Okay. So I'd like you to begin to start asking yourself the question, what does God see in this individual, the individual with whom you are struggling so severely? What does God see that you can't see? And where is the goodness in this person that God and others see and you are not yet able? Sounded very simple. It was actually very, very difficult because in the beginning, I refused to kind of let down my guard. I wanted to be right. I had a right to be mad. I felt like I was hurt not once, but many times by this individual. But I was a wise penance. Because as I began to ask that question and pray that question and sincerely sit with that question, I had to look at my perceived enemy, if you will, through a different lens. Did my enemy hurt me? Yes. Did I probably have some right to be angry? Absolutely. Did I also probably bring something to the table in those struggles? Yes. But when I began to look through the lens of love and the lens of God. That's what was so hard for me. Is this God's son with whom you were angry? And does God see goodness? Does others see goodness in this person? It was only in doing that and changing and looking through that lens, the lens that I think Jesus is inviting us to in the gospel today as he's asking us, inviting us, commanding us, challenging us to love our enemies. Because we begin to see through the lens of love and through the lens of God that all of us as God's children are family. And there's really no room for enemies in God's family. We may not get along with all of our family members at different times, but through the lens of love, we can't see an enemy. When we begin to love our enemies, our enemies are no longer enemies. They're sisters and brothers in Christ with whom we have struggled. The interesting thing about this exercise is it was not mutual and it took a long time for that other individual, whether they used the lens I used or not, to begin to look at me in the same way. But I'm very happy to report that that particular individual and myself are not even close to enemies today. We are brothers in Christ who may occasionally struggle, but nothing like where we were years ago. Because a priest wisely helped me use the lens that Jesus is inviting us today. It's a great reminder that absent war 
and even in war. We only need look at our history to see people who were cultures and peoples who were our mortal enemies at one time, who we live with in harmony and in peace. It was so powerful for me to gather in Pearl Harbor years ago and to stand next to people of Japanese descent who were not at all my enemy and to think that there was a time that we were literally at war with each other and now we stand side by side in this sacred ground revering those who gave their life for that horrible attack that day. In God's plan, we're never meant to be enemies. We may struggle with each other, but Jesus reminds us today that when we use that lens of love, we don't see the person as an enemy. We just see them as a sister. We see them as a sister or a brother with whom we might be having struggle, but as long as we can see that struggle, we can overcome that struggle and we can overcome whatever it is that has brought discord among us. It was the hardest penance I was ever given, but certainly years later, one of the best. There is real wisdom in Jesus' invitation and challenge today to love. We pause now to bring forward not only our prayers and petitions, but the needs of all who are in need this day. For the church, may God draw us closer to himself, allowing our love for one another to help us grow in mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for world leaders, that Jesus' is teaching in today's gospel may transform how they see others, especially those with whom they disagree. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for those who are persecuted. May the Lord bring them reprieve and fortify their efforts in prayer and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for this faith community. May the God of love inspire conversion of hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have passed from life into death, may the Lord bring them into life eternal with Him and the communion of saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear Lord. our prayer. For Louise Nally and for Andrew Caddy, for whom these, this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers that we hold now in the quiet of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, we ask you to hear the prayers that we bring to you today, those that we've spoken out loud, and just as importantly, those that lie quietly in our hearts. If they be your will, we ask that you grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, that will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in, the, in goodness you created us, and when we were justly condemned in mercy, you redeemed us through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like a dewfall so that they may become for us the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith we proclaim, proclaim your, your death, death, O Lord, Lord and, and profess your, your resurrection until you come again. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John the Evangelist, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, God you, you take, take away, away the sins of the world. world. Have, Have mercy on us. us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Prayer, spiritual communion, prayer this morning. My Jesus, Jesus I, believe I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love, I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are in there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you this day, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Happy Tuesday, everyone.